How's it going guys? It's Eclipse here and today we are looking at what's happening this week on World of Tanks console. We're going to have a look at the update news, what we've been given uh, for this week and get straight into it um, from now. So the first thing first, obviously, once again, uh, first strike season lasts until the 22nd of June. So you've got until then to get to tier 100 on the season pass. Uh, if you don't manage to get that, then uh, obviously you'll have to then um, either pay to get towards rank 100 or just, you know, um, have to take whatever you got throughout up to whatever level you reach. Similarly, the uh, season tanks will also be available until the 22nd of June. Would expect a big update um, when the 22nd of June comes around because obviously as the season comes out, there'll be a new season and I think a lot of new content will come out around that time as well. So probably looking at the new maps um, that we have in the game and also uh, a variety of different other things like the new Italian heavy tanks might come around then. Not entirely sure, haven't been given official things but this is just speculation and um, you know it, it's more than likely that that will happen uh, for our game anyway. In terms of other things, we've got updated game guides. This has been here for a while. If you want to go onto the Wargaming website, you can. There's plenty of uh, guides on YouTube as well. So just have a look around um, if you want to learn how to play the game a little bit better. Obviously, I'll link some playlists in the in the description down below if you want to check out some guides and, and also some gameplay that kind of just shows you the sort of positions on various different maps in various different tanks. So if you want to have a look at that, then uh, feel free to do that. Uh, we've also been given different key cards. Basically, they're the exact same as they were last week and since the 27th of April. They'll get re-rolled on the 25th of May, which is next Tuesday. So when that comes around, there'll be a whole new set of premium tanks that are in the update and we'll cover what actually came out in those key cards next week. Um, obviously, we got the KV-4 KTTS as well. So that's the KV-4 Tank Destroyer. Um, I think that I've seen a couple in-game. Um, you know, in terms of its competitiveness, it's not particularly amazingly competitive. Um, I think that it's kind of one of those tanks that could be quite interesting to play in. In certain situations when you're side scraping against similar tier tanks, it could be really fun. But I don't think that this thing is going to be particularly overpowered. And if you see them in game, don't worry too much. Just fire at the lower plate. Uh, or equally, you could hit the cupola on the top of the tank as well if you can manage to hit that. Uh, it shouldn't be too much of a problem. Then, of course, we had the trade-in slash trade-up event. Obviously, I've done a video on that, so if you want to have a look at um, my kind of thoughts on the trade-in and trade-up uh, event and update, then you can do. Personally, short answer is it's pretty terrible. Um, it's only really worth it if you genuinely just want a straight swap for one of the most expensive tanks that you have at tier 8, for example, and then trading it for maybe one of the cheaper tier 8s um, that won't cost you any gold because essentially you're trading in a tank just to get 50% um, off of the tank. Often a lot of tanks that are actually in the trade-up event actually come on sale at 50%, which means that you could just keep your tank not trade it in and get it at the same price that you'd have to pay because it only gives you half of the price of the premium tank that you trade in uh, of the cost of it originally so it's not really worth it in my opinion then of course we've got a new 3d premium commander which is big butter bill um, this is basically one of those kind of I don't know controversial updates that they've done bringing in 3d premium commanders i mean trying to make it in line with something like warzone i guess at the beginning when you've got your three tanks in a platoon and you've got the premium commander sat there but at the moment they could probably do with a little bit of updating to the model so that they're uh, a bit better in line with the hd models of the tanks uh, let's just say that anyway moving on we do have new camo as well so uh, if you didn't see already, these are the three different camo patterns. Obviously, you'll see them in-game if you're on World of Tanks right now. If you want to go to the Appearance tab in the Loadout tab of the garage, you'll see that you can uh, put on these various different new camos. There's two summer ones, and there's a winter camo as well. So you've got leaves pattern, uh, a cracked pattern, and then a stones pattern. All three camos can obviously be purchased with silver or gold, depending on how long you want to have them. 
or if you've got the uh, camouflage vouchers then you can use those to get them for free forever permanently um, obviously the camouflage vouchers are, are from quite a while ago and if you don't have any it's not really a big problem uh, but it will cost you 200 gold per camouflage per tank if you want it permanently on that tank um, with these we did get bundles so if you want permanent camouflage and you want to buy it in a bundle not that I would ever really recommend that to be honest, but you can purchase five cracked pattern camos, five leaves pattern camos, and five stones pattern camos. Uh, so that's 15 in total for 7,125 gold, which will set you back about, what, 20 quid, something like that? 20 pounds, 30 dollars for some camo on a tank? Yeah, that's um, that's not very good. Um, I would just skip right over that. I wouldn't pay 7,000 gold at all. I would never recommend that to anyone on the game. It's one of the biggest wastes of gold I think I've ever seen. Um, but yeah, not not recommended by me. Obviously, if you want to spend your money on that, then go ahead. I can't tell you that you can't, but in my personal opinion, there's much better things you could spend your money on uh, than that kind of thing. Similarly, this one is kind of, I guess, okay, but realistically, do you want to spend 3,600 gold on a premium commander uh, and three camos? We get one of each camo, so I guess it's like just an addition on top of buying the premium commander, but if you want him, then go for it. Um, but yeah, that will cost you about £10. Um, then we have improved looks. So this is just basically a, a sale of a tank. We've got the American Tier Four, uh, Tier Five M4 improved. This is a medium tank from the American line. Uh, it's not particularly uh, too good in game. We'll have a look at the statistics. But for me personally, you'd be better off saving your gold. And there's plenty of uh, M4s in the game that I would probably rather have over it. And I mean. If you want to play something like that, just play the actual M4 um, or the EZ8. Um, yeah, it's just no point in real really spending money on like another um, tier 5 in the game because you're not making money at that tier. And yeah, it's kind of pointless when you could just play a better tank at tier 6 in the M4 A3 E8. Uh, so yeah, oh, that's that's kind of what I do. Obviously, you get the, pa um, uh, the camo with that. Then similarly you get the Panzer KPFW4H which is actually quite a good tank, it's an interesting one um, but yet again 3400 gold is a bit of rip off and then, <laughs> oh god and then we get the Churchill 3, this is a tier, six, uh, tier 5 heavy tank and you get the stones pattern camo um, mm, yeah don't don't try the Churchill 3, it's a terrible tank, um, yeah, not one I would ever recommend, so yeah, just uh, just avoid all of those to be honest with you, they're not ones I'd recommend, but obviously if you want to play tier 5 then go ahead, um, but as far as the actual competitiveness, you're probably looking at the Hydrostat being the better one of the three tanks there. Then we have got a few actual tank bundles, we'll go through them, um, obviously if you want to skip ahead to the next bit of the video then you can, uh, this is just for those of you interested in what tanks are actually quite good in the game in terms of the premiums and uh, highlighting the bundles which are actually quite good. First one, um, straight away I'm thinking no, um, Panzer 58 Mutz left behind by the, uh, by the power creep, Guardian SDG kind of left, well it wasn't particularly amazing when it first came in anyway, uh, yeah it's just an intro, it's just a kind of, it's, it's based around armour but the armour doesn't really work on it, yeah not really particularly a tank I like, and then the STRV 81, this is like the, um, uh, the Swedish version of the Centurion, it's it's okay, it's nothing broken and certainly paying 12,000 gold for three tanks that are just meh is something I wouldn't really recommend to anyone, so if you are thinking about it, obviously take that in mind, if you like medium tanks then go ahead, um, it's just a, a case of don't go thinking that they're going to be super really good and you're going to earn loads and loads of silver with them um, because that's just probably not going to be the case. And then we have Commander's Choice Heavies, so we've got the Paladin um, Carnarvon Action X, which most of you probably already have if you did the Paladin Urn operation a few months back, or maybe a month back. Uh, yeah, 
I think, you know, if you've got the money, that will take off a chunk of the cost of the actual package. The other two tanks are actually not too bad. The Barracuda is really nice to play in game. Um, the King Tiger, it's just another Tiger at tier 8. You know, it's a premium version. If you've got the captured King Tiger, it's very, very similar. Uh, this one you might already have as well. So if you've got both the Paladin Carnarvon Action X and the King Tiger and you've got that amount of gold, you can basically get a 60% off of the Barracuda, which is not bad uh, considering if you have them both. So if you have the gold on your account, obviously Wargaming being cheeky and not actually just uh, if you've already owned them, meaning that you could just purchase it for, say, 6,000 gold just for the Barracuda, you actually have to have the whole value of the package and then you get the gold back after you purchase the package, if that makes sense. So it's basically a way of them just making you pay for more gold to buy the package, but then get the gold back at the discounted price. So yeah, it's, it's a weird system, but okay. And moving on, we have Commander's Choice Lights. So this one is is actually quite a good bundle. Now, all of these tanks are pretty fantastic. The LT-432, now that we've got the traction system and some of the things that can improve the handling of the tank on rough terrain and, and you know, the various different terrains in the game, means that this tank will actually be really, really nice in-game. It will turn quicker, and that was kind of the thing holding the back the tank. Similarly, the Aguila, uh, or the Hawk 30, or Aguila, um, is, is a really nice uh, German Tier 8 light tank. Plays very, very similar to the RU-251. Uh, so, yeah, it's, it's a really nice one. And then we have the Hollenhund, which is also a really good tank. It got a buff recently. Um, and for 8,800 gold, that's a very nice bundle if you like your light tanks. So, you know, it's one of the better ones I've seen for light tanks in the game. So, if you're interested, then go ahead. Um, it's one of the better ones this week. And then the last couple, we have Commander's Choice Destroyers. Uh, with this one, you get the Kanonen Jagdpanzer 105, the Iron Rain Borsig Waffentrager, and the Terrapin Mark 1. Uh, as far as the tanks go, the Iron Rain being the best one there, with a three-shot autoloader with 550 alpha damage, I believe, if I am correct in thinking that. Um, yeah, that this thing is just disgusting in the game. It is very, very slow, 490 alpha even, uh, but it does have a three-shot autoloader, as you can see. Time between the shots is fairly low. It's not massive, but it gives you time to wh whack out that like 1500 or 1470 alpha damage with the gun that it gets. It has a really long reload, but, you know, since you're a Borsig, you can just hide for the rest of that time. And, um, yeah, really, really nice Iron Rain tank there. Uh, then we have the Terrapin Mark 1, which I believe is a British tank destroyer. It's um, it's nicknamed the Turtle. It's like a, a tier 8 badger, basically. The armor doesn't work particularly amazingly um, because of this lower plate if they can hit it. But if you do go hold down, this thing can actually be really strong against tier 8s. Coming up against tier 9s and 10s, it will struggle a little bit. Uh, but it's it's definitely an interesting one that can actually work uh, as opposed to the like things like the AT15 where people just pen you straight through your superstructure. Um, yeah, it's it's a decent tank. Then we have the Kanon Jagdpanzer 105, which is also a nice one, 390 alpha, I think. Um, or it might even be 320 actually. Uh, but this this tank is actually really nice as well. Um, this is one that kind of remains to be stealthy 390 alpha 70 kilometers an hour similar to the e25 but it's a tier higher and the alpha damage um means that you've got a longer reload but it kind of plays that similar sort of style where you kind of have to use your concealment and camo to avoid being detected and just uh, attack your enemies from long ranges um with the decent accuracy that this gets at 0.34 which will go down really really low uh, when you put all of the accuracy perks that you'll probably want on the tank um so yeah a decent bundle and one that, you know, if you're a tank destroyer player, then this one is actually not a bad kind of range of tank destroyers and the playstyles that you want to use when having a go in them. Then finally, we have Commander's Choice 7s. Uh, this one, probably the one that I'd avoid this week. Uh, yeah, definitely one that is particularly... It gives you two pretty average tanks. Um, KV-122 is okay. Yeah, I mean, it's not a terrible one, but it, it's certainly an interesting tank to play. But yet again, it is at tier 7, and when you can just have a look at some of the light tanks, you'll probably be better doing that. The Lycan T71 is a really good light tank at tier 7. 
Autoloader, fantastic. A Cripsdale Waffen Traeger, a mm, bit disappointing. Uh, not particularly amazing. And yeah, I think that you'd be best to kind of avoid this package as often you'll see that just the Lycan and the KV122, the better ones in the bundle, actually come on sale fairly regularly. And if you just want to purchase one of them, then you can do a 15% discount in the premium tech tree. So make sure to do that if you actually wanted any of the ones within uh, this news article that we've just showcased. Then finally, um, we do have weekly deals. We've got 50% off the T32A Proto and the Tiger 217. Uh, the T32A Proto is actually a really nice auto-loading T32 if you like that kind of playstyle, the American hold down playstyle where you're trying to rely on your turret armor, then the T38A uh, 2A Proto is actually really nice. You've got that three round auto loader. It will cost you 5,950 gold if you want to pick it up, which is actually not bad for a tier 8 heavy tank, which tend to be the most expensive out of the classes. Uh, yeah, really, really nice tank and certainly one that if you haven't played auto loaders and you haven't played um, very much of the uh, the heavy tanks, then you might want to kind of avoid. But if you do enjoy those auto loaders, then this one is certainly no different to the rest of them. And uh, yeah, it is, it'll be an interesting one for you to pick up. And then finally, the Tiger 217. This is a tier 6. It's a pretty fast firing Tiger. I think it gets a smaller gun. Um, yeah, really, really nice one. And if you want to actually play in it, then it'll only cost you 2,100 gold. Or similarly, if you do have um, up uh, the Game Pass on Xbox, then you can pick up a thousand gold and two free tanks, which give you the Citadel. Um, so if you want that, it's a very similar tank, and it'll just cost you probably less actually to purchase the Game Pass for one month, and you'll get all of those benefits. You'll get the thousand gold, you get the two free tanks, and I think you get like seven days of premium or something like that. So if you want to just purchase that, it's eleven pound, and it won't cost you much more than this package on its own. Then we have got a last kind of thing in today's thing, which is uh, it's raining silver operation. So this is for the weekend. We will have a 50% bonus silver earn operation um, on at the moment or on on the weekend, I should say. Uh, that's from the 21st of May to the 25th of May. You'll have four days to be able to grind out some silver. Uh, so that means that you can get quite a lot. I'm talking about 50%. So that will work for both um, the premium uh, tanks in your garage and also uh, it will combine with the premium account time so if you've got premium account uh, plus this 50% will mean that you get two times silver over the standard variant of the game and yeah it's going to be really really nice for for earning some silver this weekend couple that with the times two silver boost if you actually manage to pick up any uh, from the various seasons and challenges that come over the time then you'll be able to easily pick up 400,000 games uh, silver games within the within world of tanks anyway um, and hopefully uh, you'll be able to get some of that silver for the new cold war game mode which is just stealing everyone's uh, silver at the moment um, so yeah, hopefully uh, you guys uh, are at least seeing that Wargaming are making some good changes and they're, they're taking a step in the right direction with regards to the silver. There's been a lot of silver boosts and, and earn ops to be able to kind of counteract that negative um, silver economy in the Cold War game mode, which is fine for me because I'm not even playing the Cold War game mode. I've kind of given it a big, a big um, kind of block. I'm not really interested in it it's not something I really find uh, particularly fun to play and I certainly am just enjoying earning loads of silver in the World War 2 game mode just to grind through some of the tanks that I haven't already and purchase some of the tier 10s I haven't managed to actually get enough silver to buy yet so yeah that's always good and then we do have one last thing and that is that you will be able to pick up an update on the game today as of the release of this video on the 19th of May uh, it will be already available whenever you watch this video it will be a one gig update they've not actually given any update notes as of yet which is really annoying as of the recording of this video there will be some uh, soon but i expect that these are just small fixes for various problems that have come up on the game so if you see any of the problems that you've noticed over the couple of last couple of months uh, change and actually be fixed and that is why uh, in game 
Hopefully this video covered everything that you needed to know for the update. If you did enjoy it, then obviously subscribe to the channel for more content like this. And uh, remember that I do gameplay videos for World of Tanks console as well. So if you want to watch any of those, then there will be some videos on screen along with a playlist of all of the update news for the most recent uh, couple of updates. Uh, so if you want to have a look at that, then you can. Uh, other than that, I hope you guys have a great rest of your day and I hope to see you in the next video. Goodbye.